So um, let's talk about Olympia again. What you know that was recently obviously announced that it was sold. American Media Inc. sold sold it to uh, to Jake Wood. Um, okay. What can you, what can you tell our audience about the sale that they might not know? Uh, well, I mean, it's it's you know it's a public um, uh, information obviously, so most people know all the basics. Um, Jake is a great guy uh, to have the Olympia uh, in his hands. Um, the difference between you know, private and versus public um, is minute, the minute corporate gets involved, okay, and AMI is a corporate entity and has been, obviously, for, since day one. Um, what you don't get is passion. You don't get passion. You don't give love for the game. David Packer, AMI, the whole crew uh, that, you know, the, the business end of things, they don't know bodybuilding. They never were into bodybuilding. It's not how they grew up. It's not, it wasn't like Joe Weider, okay? Um, so, you know, it's not like they did a horrible job under the direction of uh, uh, Robin Chang, who I worked with for many years. Um, you know, I think we did what we could do with what we had to work with. Unfortunately, Robin, his hands were tied a lot of the times where we had to continue to put out uh, the same or better product with less and less and less money. Budget. Everything was budget. Can't do this because of budget. Can't do that because of budget. And that's the problem when you get into, um, again, corporate versus private. Jake Wood has passion and love for bodybuilding. Women's bodybuilding, men's bodybuilding, and the entire sport of bodybuilding. Um, so now what I think you're going to see is a return um, of the Olympia and moving forward. I, I think we spun wheels for the better part of 14 years. Um, we didn't take any steps backwards, but we didn't really go forwards either. So uh, with Jake Wood now in, in an ownership position with Dan Solomon, my good buddy, um, you know, in the uh, uh, position of uh, putting it on, uh, Tamer Al Gindi, again, another uh, a great close friend of mine, you know, in the producer role. We got a great team. Tim Gardner in there now. Uh, he was just named. Uh, he's going to be overtaking um, the expo duties and things like that. You're going to see, and the fans are going to see a lot of great positive changes moving forward. I say we take more steps forward in the next through two to three years than we've taken in the last 14. Wow, that's that's amazing news for the for the fans, of course. Uh, because I think yeah. some concern was that, you know, now that a corporation like AMI is no longer involved, is it going to be the same type of budgeting and backing that, that you just mentioned? You know what I mean? No, that was it's going to be better. <laughs> so that's the problem. Is Let me just give you a scenario, Vlad, okay? Uh, I'm an idea guy. A lot of people know that. I come up with things all the time, have for many years, uh, whether it be the NPC, the IFBB Pro League, um, uh, uh, NPC Worldwide now with my shows overseas, uh, with two bros, you know, my partner Ian Constable. Um I've had ideas for years that I've brought to the table for the Olympia. Here's the problem, okay? I come up with an idea. Let's just say it's to, um, I don't know, get all the former champs together, okay? Now, the first question that comes back to me is, okay, great, Bob, how much is it going to cost? You know, and I come up with some number, okay? It's like, well, it's probably going to cost us, I don't know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 to get these guys together, get a booth, let's make a Olympia Legends booth, you know, something like that. Okay, now... I've got to try to convince a guy who's probably never even seen the inside of a gym, let alone know anything about bodybuilding, okay? Because his question is going to be, okay, it's $70,000 is what you're saying it's going to cost. What's the return? Well, there isn't an automatic numerical re return uh, for some of these type of things, okay? This is, it's, it's an idea to be put in place to give more for the fans, okay? So that when you go there to, to get the Olympia experience, you're treated to some things, you know, that you get that you're paying for to, to go see. Well, it doesn't have an, an automatic ROI, okay? I'm trying to sit, put there, put something in place that's going to be better for the Olympia, better experience for the fans. Now, it doesn't necessarily have a, a ticket price to it. It's just part of, let's say, the expo, all right? Again, this is a guy looking at a ledger, and he's going, so you're telling me it's going to cost us $70,000 to do this, and there's no monetary return? And you can see where this falls on deaf ears real quick because they can't justify it. Okay, this is a guy, again, his job is to do numbers. It's not his fault per se, but this is different than me, let's say, hypothetically going to Dan Solomon and Jake Wood and going, hey, I've got an idea. Here's how much it's going to cost. Well, they understand the implication of why this is a good idea or, hey, the fans would love that. And this would be great because ultimately you want to give a reason for the fans to come back. It can't just be an expo full of booths. Nobody has ever come to the Olympia because there was going to be a booth there. So you've got to give an experience. You see what I'm saying? You've got to give an experience to fans that they have a good time. Wow, man, did you see that? They had this and they had that. And man, what a, what a great time. I'm coming back. 
And that's where I think we can get to some, some better uh, uh, propositions going forward, some ideas that can be looked at. And no, not everything's got a, an ROI of right now. Okay, what I can guarantee you is over the next two, three, four, five years, 10 years, this is going to be a huge impact of why people would want to come and support the Olympia. For sure, man. That sounds good. Um, what did you take on the Rocks Athleticon that's going to take place? Uh, actually, I think in Atlanta, right? Um, it's right here. Yeah. Right. Do you, what do you what What did you take on that? And do you, do you see it as a competition for Olympia or a supporting a supporting entity for Olympia? Well, this is kind of funny because it's been kind of portrayed out there as if it's some sort of competition for the Olympia. Let me just clear up a few things for for the fans that are watching. Number one, uh, I'm all for it. I've been friends with the Rock since before. Before he was the rock. Okay. Um, we go way back to, to LA and, 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 you know, hanging out there in, in our spare time and stuff. Great guy, uh, Danny Garcia, very smart. Uh, they do great business together. Um, and he, all he's done in the last 10 years since then is, has become the biggest star in the world. Okay. So, um, I think it's fantastic to have him involved. Number one, this is a pro league event. Okay. It's not competition. This is sponsored. I shouldn't say sponsored. It's, uh, sanctioned by, the IFBB Pro League, the NPC Worldwide, under Jim Mannion, okay? So this is part of us, okay? It's one of our shows. So it's not competition. Number two, um, you got to kind of get in line here. I think the Arnold's been around a little bit longer, and a guy named Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's done a few things in his time as well. Uh, they've been around, you know, so I think they've got a pretty big show. Um, the purse that was originally proposed, and I, and I believe they're still going forward with this, was about a million dollars in prize money. Now, that quickly got misconstrued to, oh, they're putting out a million-dollar prize money. It's like, well, wait a minute here. It's a million-dollar purse, and they have chosen, at least the last I knew about it, uh, they chose to uh, want complete parity in the prize money, and then every uh, division gets the same amount of money. Okay. Now, if you take a million and you split it up, and it's I think there's eight divisions, we'll go with that, Okay, you're looking at a little over $100,000 per division. So let's just take, I don't know, pick something, women's bikini, okay? Um, I don't know why I have to say women's bikini. It's not like there's a men's bikini, but, you know. Um, but we'll take bikini, okay? So that's, let's say it's $120,000. Now, generally, as purses get split, it's usually half and half and half and half uh, or close to it. So if it's $120,000, half would be sixty. dollars So it would be a $60,000 first prize. You know, and it would probably go from there, you know, 60, 30, 15, you know, that, that type of thing. Okay, so listen, that's great, and it's beautiful for the athletes, and it's a great opportunity. Um, and listen, anything that puts money in the, in the athletes' hands, as everybody knows, as the athletes rep for many, many years, I'm all for. But let's not get carried away. There's a big difference between a $60,000 first place, uh, and that's, by the way, that's great for all the other divisions except for men's open, which puts in the probably fourth or fifth in terms of prize money. I think the Prog Pro is higher, and, and you know, uh, you got the New York Pro and, and all these other uh, high-end shows that have been around. Um, listen, that's fantastic, but sixty thousand isn't four hundred thousand at the Olympia, uh, nor the prestige of the Olympia title. So this is fantastic. It's a great opportunity. I welcome it. I'm all for it. I support it one hundred percent, as we do in the IFBB Pro League and the NPC Worldwide. Um, but no, it's not competition for the Olympia. It was never intended to be competition. Uh, the Olympia title has been around since 1965, and everybody knows the history and all that stuff. Um, if it had zero money, it, it's still the Olympia title. It still means you're the best in the world. 